everybody. Welcome to another thrilling episode of Data Double Click. I'm your host, Scott Klein, and with me back in the studio is Ron Ortloff. Yes. Uh, how you doing? Scott, doing well, doing well. Awesome. So uh, I'm excited to have you back. Last time, a couple weeks ago, you were here. We talked about the, uh, I think, phenomenally, phenomenal topic of um, concurrency slots. Yes. And, and partitions. Re replicated tables. Re replicated tables. Yep. 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 Uh, and so you're back to talk about more about the data movement side of things, right? Yes, exactly. And so I'm excited about this. This yeah. is kind of new Gen 2 stuff, right? Yes, exactly. Yep. So before we get started, though, yep. uh, remind people who you are, and then yeah. we'll jump in. So yeah, my name is Ron Ortloff. I'm a program manager on the Azure SQL Data Warehouse team. Awesome. Yep. All right, so today we're going to talk about... Yes, Gen 2 and some data movement enhancements that we did. Yeah. Yep. Uh, for, uh, for the underlying better performance, correct? Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Yep. So this is a peer kind of performance play here um, yeah. on the software side. Awesome, yeah. now is this due to, and up, you know, uh, is this feedback that you've gotten or is that just, hey, we need to improve things? And Yeah, I mean, certainly um, we're looking for ways that we can yeah. use software to leverage the existing hardware that we have right. or the, 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 the enhanced hardware that we're getting. Yep. So um, looking for ways to just make the service more scalable. Okay, Absolutely. cool. All right, so let's just jump right in. Sure. What do you got? Okay, so yeah, we're going to talk today about um, some data movement enhancements that we did on, on the Gen 2 version of the service. Um, so before we get too far into the details, let's take a look a little bit into the kind of underlying infrastructure that we have for, for SQL DW. Okay. So this is again compute and control node. So control node is kind of that app connective connectivity point. Yep. Um, and then it controls all interaction between the compute nodes and any sort of user queries that are being submitted into the system. Okay, yep. Yep. Um, so within that though, you know, as you're laying your data out on the SQL DW instance, you have to distribute the data and not all queries actually require data to be distributed the same way. Right. So that requires us to actually have to move data across um, compute nodes themselves and also up into the control node. Right. So for that, we actually use this standalone service called the Data Movement Service, or DMS. Right. So lots of folks out there know DMS, have, have seen DMS being used for years within the, the SQL DW infrastructure. And there's ways to go, hey, if, you know, there was that, I think, was it you that were here, when we see a lot of data management uh, service, uh, or, or data movement services, that can be a bad thing, yes. essentially, right? Yep, exactly. Right. Uh, so anytime you're moving data across the appliance, you're not necessarily returning results to the user, and you're not necessarily returning right. value to the user. Yeah. Um, it's stuff that we have to do because of how the data has been laid out right. to achieve that faster query yep. runtime. Yep, yep. okay. So, DMS, yes, that's that's on installed on the control node on all of the compute nodes, and then that's used for communication between control and comp compute, and moving data between those, as well as moving data across the different compute nodes. Okay. So, how does data get laid out across these different distributions and surfaced onto compute? So that's done via one of three options today. You have a hash distributed tables, yep. round robin, or replicated. Okay. Um, so hash distributed, it's using a hashing algorithm to put data across the different distributions. Round robin, same kind of concept, it's just randomly split across yep. and then replicated as we talked about last session, yeah. full copy on all, of the, uh, on all of the... And there's pros and cons to each of those, correct? Yes, yep, yep, exactly. And so for today though, for the examples that we're going to talk about, we'll, we're going to focus mainly on, okay. on hash distributed tables. Yep. So taking a click into hash, dis hash distributed tables and how those work, um, let's take this example here. So I've got a data set of product sales, like a transaction table. Yeah. I've got the raw data over here in this table. Um, I've actually created a product sales table with this DDL up top here in the upper right-hand corner. So mm -hmm. you can see I've actually hash distributed the table on account ID. Okay. Yeah. So now as this data is being loaded, um, we'll hash the value account ID here, which is 47, and we'll make a determination on where that data is supposed to go. Okay. So in this case, it lands in the first distribution bucket. Um, the next row, 36 here, then moves into distribution three, and so on, yep. and so on, and so on, okay, until all your data is loaded. Yep. Now I've got good data spread across all the distributions, and I'm ready for query. Right. Okay. okay? And that's a common scenario. People, uh, that's a very common scenario, right there. Yeah. So hash distribution is best for your large fact tables. Yeah. Pick a column that's going to give you good spread and, and yep. less amount of skew for your data, okay. and then you try to leverage that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so taking a look at it from a query perspective. So again, let's use our product sales. Yep. Um, and let's bring another table in. So let's call this one sales account territory. Um, so you can see with the DDL here again on the right side, uh, sales account territory is hash distributed, but now we've distributed it on sales territory ID. Yep. So now I've got the data actually sorted here on 
sales territory ID and then account ID for product sales. Mm -hmm. So if we look at this from a like a compute node perspective and how the data is being surfaced into the actual compute, we can see here we've got node one with account ID of 47 and here account ID 37 on this compute node. Yeah. Okay. If I want to do a query such as the one here on the right, just a typical kind of analytics query, top 25 sales by territory name, um, I'm joining product sales together with sales account territory, and I'm doing it on account ID across the two tables. Yep. So if I, re if I executed this query as you see it here today, we would return no rows, right? The yep. data is 37, is it equal to 47? No, no rows are returned and the data would just, in essence, be broken and yeah. not return And that's results. because it's looking on the same node, yes. right? Yep. So distributions are mounted to nodes. Nodes, yep. nodes talk to each other, each other. then, and, and yep. actually what the data is, is there. So, okay, yep. yep. All right. Exactly. So what we actually do internally now is we create a temporary object, and we actually shuffle this data and redistribute it on the account ID. Right, okay. Now that gives us a, an object, a temporary object, um, that is now distribution aligned. Yep. And that shuffle happens on query execution. During right. query execution, okay. right. Yep. 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 So it, it's in essence a step that happens within this distributed query plan, and then that's result. Okay. Yeah, it's part of the result of the query. Okay. So in this case now, I have uh, data that's all completely aligned, and then the query can go ahead and complete and return to the user. Okay. Okay? Perfect. So if I look at this from a Gen 1, Gen 2 perspective, and, and now how it looks with, with Gen 1 um, and DMS, using the um, DMS to actually execute the, the shuffle move operation. Yeah. So data is pulled out of the distributed databases into the DMS service itself. So that sales account territory data came out of the, the distribution database into the DMS service. The DMS service talks to itself, mm -hmm. shares the data, um, and then from there it's pumped into the local tempdb on each of the compute nodes. Okay. All right. So challenges with this, the data is actually has to come out of the SQL Server engine. Um, it's a standalone process, so there's a fixed amount of memory that's there and it's allocated for yep. DMS. Um, the actual method of using the bulk copy API is not very scalable. Um, and we're not able to leverage all this increased cores and memory and network connectivity that right. we have. Okay. So we're, we're kind of running out of speed here with, <laughs> with, with the DMS service right. as it currently exists. So there's a finite limitation of, okay, yep, DMS only goes so far even on the new kind of exactly. next generation exactly. hardware. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So what we did with Gen 2 now, um, we've basically taken DMS out of the picture for the shuffle. All together. Right? Just all together. Okay. Right? So now we're in a scenario like this where when, I'm, when I need to basically shuffle that sales account territory, I just go directly from the distributed tables into the actual tempdb on, on the other compute nodes. nodes. Okay. Yep. yep. And that happens just across the board then. The, we have knowledge of the topology, so we can move the data directly where we need, know it okay. needs to go. Yep. So you just eliminated an entire step. Forget the DMS service. I'm just going to take the data, put it in TempDB on the other nodes, yep. do the shuffle, yep. bring the data back. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Yep. So in this case now, data is not leaving the SQL engine. Mm -hmm. We're able to leverage batch mode, which is a lot more less um, overhead wise, and then we can scale. <laughs> okay. And the greatest thing about this improvement is it's free. free. Yeah. Right? So we, no we like free. <laughs> <laughs> we free I figured you might. I figured folks might. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, so there's no, you don't have to use, you don't have to change code to take advantage. Right. Okay. So that's why I call it free. Right? Okay. Yeah. You, your code that's running, and, and we'll show a demo here in a second, it runs the same way on Gen 1, Gen 2. Two. It just, it's a lot more efficient on, on Gen 1. Okay. So with that, with that said, let's, let's jump over to the demo. Demo time. Okay, so for the demo today, we're going to run the same query. Um, this is TPCH schema. Um, we're, this is Q14 from the TPCH benchmark. Okay, yep. Um, lots of folks out there know that. So I, I'm taking the big line item table that's there, and it's being joined into the part table. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and kick this one off on Gen 1, so we kind of get that going and out of the way, um, and then come over here to Gen 2. Same exact query, um, again, join into line item and part. So same query, yep. yep. And I've labeled these both here just so we can capture it quick. In the, in the actual DMDs and see runtime. Okay. So let's go ahead and kick this guy off. That one's up and going. So I've got my two monitor queries over here. This guy's going, okay, nine seconds. This one's done. Okay. This is Gen 2. Yep. Come back over here to Gen 1. This he, guy's he's still, still going. <laughs> still figuring it out. So 32 yeah. seconds and now, now Gen 1 finished up. Okay. So come over here and let's take a look at the DMDs. So the key thing here is, is the shuffle move operation. So we can see now 
on the Gen 1 instance where the location type equals to DMS, yep. then I know I'm, I'm on the old DMS mode for, right. for the shuffle move operation. Okay. So this is no small amount of data. This is DW1000, by the way, on, on both wow. uh, Gen 1 and Gen 2. Okay. Over 200 million records. Um, Ooh, those were shuffled using DMS in 26 seconds. Dang. Okay. Yep. Well, let's go take a look at Gen 2. So again, it looks a little similar. You see the shuffle move operation here. Yep. But now the location type is equal to compute. Okay. So now I know it's using the new improved method right. for shuffling the data. The same 204 million records, but yep. now instead of 26 seconds, we finished it in four and a half seconds. Dang. So kind of five, five x, six x boost Cruiser. now yep. that you're seeing here on. Okay. On, uh, on shuffle move performance with the new capability. Wow. So, so, and that manifests itself here in the query runtime, right? You see the nine seconds. Yep. And you, you have 20 or 32, 32 seconds, seconds over here for, yeah. for general. Holy cow. Yep. So go back. So there was still, um, and I, I'm going to apologize, go back to the, the, the Gen 2. Mm -hmm. There was still a DMS move. Is that from no, a... this is a compute move. Okay. No, oh, that, I'm looking at... It's a step. Okay. Oh, this, yeah. So... There are still some operations that are going to leverage DMS. Okay. Yeah, we don't retire DMS completely with this. Improvement. Okay. Yeah. But we're talking specifically the shuffle move shuffle operation. Shuffle move so operation. It's, it's now called compute instead of. Uh, it's it compute instead of, of DMS. Of DMS. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And that's because based on the architecture we saw, it's now going taking the data right to TempDB on the other yeah. nodes. There's not, not a whole DMS, DMS to to do that. Yep. Right? Exactly. The shuffle. That's awesome. Yeah. Right out of the gate, so we got what you said five, six times performance yep. just by getting rid of DMS and yep. the architecture. No code change. change. No code change. No code change. And that's cool. I, I love that. Yeah. It's uh, the, the way. Now, is this, as we were talking through this, because um, I had this discussion with uh, the SQL team probably a year ago when they were talking about SQL 16 and SQL 17. They, you know, all the, the you know, the entire uh, code base of SQL was based on older generation hardware, right? right and what they right. did is they said, hey, all this new hardware is coming in. Right. And they're like, we need to look at how the how the engine's architect to take advantage of this new hardware, exactly. right? Yep. And so just by um, upgrading your hardware or, or now just by upgrading to SQL Server, you can get better, you know, no changes, just upgrade. Right. Is it the same same, 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 same concept? Kind of, same concept. You're looking at, yeah. hey, all this new awesome yeah. hardware yeah. and... Gen 2 is based on a new, you know, more improved hardware architecture, right? A yeah. lot more cores, a lot yeah. more RAM. Um, we need to figure out better ways to take advantage of right. the hardware. But right. at the same time, you're going, hey, we can do this without the data, data movement service type right. of thing, right? So right. hardware plus right. some kind of a software right. so, change. So do we, make, do we make enhancements into DMS or do we make them into the actual engine itself right. and just try right. to do things a little bit more efficient? Right. So it's kind of right. a balancing both the right. hardware change plus the how do we improve exactly. that, right? Yeah. This is very cool. So, yes. I, you know, and I think you were here, was it you or someone was showing me, you can just just by going the button Gen one to Gen two, yes. you get these changes, yes, yes, right? So, yes. so migration it's, in the portal. Migration yeah. in the portal. So it's very so it's you know shame on you <laughs> if you haven't clicked that button to migrate to Gen two, yep. right? So there awesome, Ron. Thank you so much. Yes, this is fantastic. I love the things that you guys are doing. Thank you. Uh, so we need to get more out there so people can start. You know, more videos on on you, what the awesome work you guys are doing. Awesome. So uh, thanks for coming, Ron. Really okay. appreciate it. Hey everybody, great video, great great technology. Uh, start using. Oh, and uh, again, if they have any questions, they can. Yep. Uh, Hit. That's our uh, Twitter handle there, Azure SQL DW, yep. or that's mine on the bottom there. So okay. feel free to shoot me a message if you have any questions about this or anything else with awesome. SQL DW. Great. Great way to get feedback. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Ron, thanks for coming. Yep. Everybody, we'll see you next time. Appreciate it.